For those that don't know me, my name's Lynn Francis. I'm KW4WL. Did everybody get the survey that went out about two months ago? Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, well, so a survey went out to get interest and what have you. And uh, I think we, we had about 38 people reply. About 15 of them said they were interested in learning CW. So I was, was really hoping to see a lot of new faces here and um, you know, people that was maybe interested and in, you know, had interest in learning CW but didn't really know where to start. Because I'll be the first to tell you, I am a beginner. I am not an instructor. I've just been trying to learn for the last umpteen years. And I can tell you what didn't work for, for me. And then I can tell you what did work for me. And uh, so I've had a lot of fun over the last several months with it. So I thought I could do that. And then from there, if we had any interest, we could see if, if we wanted to put together some sort of learning group, support group, special interest group, something along those lines. So that was the idea. <clears throat> Um, so, if I can do it, anybody can, <laughs> trust me. Um, so, th this is from my log from QRZ, uh, all the contacts, strictly CW that I've made. I don't have worked all states yet, but uh, I'm getting there. And uh, I've got a few other little countries out here, you know, other than just the US. And this is the coolest one. I am number four in Georgia for the 2021 New England CUSO party. Now maybe there were only four people that submitted logs, I don't know. But that was pure CW, and it wasn't going crazy fast or anything else. And um, I forgot how many contacts I made, but it, it wasn't, I don't know, maybe seven, 800 points. It wasn't anything major. But I got some uh, paper to put on the wall, and it looks really pretty, right? Um, I, I've done, Last several years, well actually, since I got my license, I like playing on the 13 colonies every, every uh, July. <clears throat> the last two years, I've done it strictly in CW, just as a challenge for myself. And uh, so I've done that. There's a weekly slow speed contest and the uh, CW Ops test, the CWT, uh, once a week. Actually, that's twice a week as well. The SST is nice and slow and easy. It's capped at about 20 words per minute. The CWT still blows my brain, okay? Um, I've, I've played in the CQ Worldwide Contest, the CW Contest. I made the mistake of calling C, uh, CQ once. Yeah, I'm not ready for that. Uh, <laughs> Nine million people, you know, come back at one time. But, uh, you know, searching and pouncing is still, still not bad. Uh, it, it's really easy to play state CUSO parties, Coda is a super simple way to get started in CW because the exchange is really super simple and soda is, you know, falls into that category as well, but, but POTA is even a simpler exchange. So I am not an expert, but I've played with Morse code and I've got some, you know, wall art and I can say that I've made some contacts. So Morse code is not dead. Um, I don't remember what contest that was, but I, I turned on the radio one day and I saw that and I, I actually sent a video of it to a friend of mine who's also trying to learn Morse. Hey, go ahead and sign in there if you don't mind. <clears throat> and uh, because I, it blew me away how many signals were on at, at the time. Now, that was a contest, not just a normal, normal night. But uh, can anybody decipher any of that? I can some, but not very much. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, Morse code, it is still a real thing. And like I said, the, this was supposed to be aimed at you know, people that's interested in getting started with it. So uh, some of the things that I wanted to, to point out was, uh, man, what, what a great time to learn Morse code because uh, there's just unlimited learning material, most of which is free. Um, that's a positive, but on the flip side, it can also be, um, it can be a hindrance because you get on there and there are so many websites, so many recordings, so it, it's kind of overload at, at what all there is. But uh, there's applications for your PC, phone, tablet, websites, CDs, cassettes, you know, forums, classes, everything out there. There's no pressure to learn. You don't have to learn it. You only learn it because you want to learn it. You know, you don't have to have it for a license anymore. Um, so there shouldn't be any pressure. You're doing it for fun. If it's not fun, why do it? Um, one big thing is CW, Morse code, it, it's all in the ear. 
It's music, okay? It is not visual. So if you, if you hear someone tells you, you know, this is a great book or a great diagram or, you know, this is the tree, you follow the dit, da, dit, figure out what the letter is, run. Don't do that because you will, you, you'll set this plateau that is really, really hard to overcome. And I can tell you that because I did that. And that's not the way to do it. <clears throat> If I lose my voice, it's because of all weekend. Um, <clears throat> so just a, a few little definitions or whatever. Uh, the cock, conch, cock, whatever method, depending on where you look, it's pronounced several different ways, is, um, I forgot the guy's actual name, but it, it's a method that someone came up with for learning Morse code, and it's what letters are the order of the letters that you should learn, okay? So it's using the most, uh, uh, the most frequent letters first or what have you. Anyway, so it's the order of the letters. Farnsworth is character speed. So with Farnsworth, what you want to do, is, if you turn on the radio and you hear somebody on, on the air, you know, trying to send Morse code and they're sending something really slow, Actually, that's pretty fast compared to some of them. <laughs> so you, you hear something like that, and you're hearing the dits and the da's, and you're going, see, da, 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 what, you know, and you're doing this look up in your head, and that's slowing you down. It's not what you want. We go back to the, the CW's auditory, right? It's music. You want, to hear, you want to hear the musical tone. So Farnsworth, it's playing the character speed, full speed, and then adding extra space between the characters. Uh, so that it gives your mind a little bit of time to go, oh, well, that's a C, that's a Q. That's somebody's calling CQ, right? Gives you a little extra time. Um, so just as a little example, <clears throat> so if someone says they're doing, uh, well, so words per minute, depending on where you, you look it up, in general, it's defined as five character words, and it doesn't have to actually be a word, it's just five characters, um, makes a word per minute. So if it was, 20 words per minute, um, it would be five characters times 20, 100 characters per minute, which is roughly a character every eh, one and a half seconds, thereabout, okay? So, but if you have an effective speed by adding um, extra space between the characters, you may have 20 words per minute characters, but you may only really be doing like 10 words per minute. Okay, because you're adding all that extra space, which is perfectly fine. Um, so a definition that's going around, or seems to be going around now, is called Wordsworth. Basically, it's you're sending the characters within a word full speed, no, no extra space. But then at the end of the word, you leave extra space. And that really comes in when you're trying to get above 20, 25 words per minute, <clears throat> because um, once you get up to those speeds, you start hearing words. And that's the craziest thing. You know, I'll be listening to somebody, and I'm just about the point where, you know, I'm, I'm hearing characters and putting words together, and then all of a sudden, just out of the blue, I hear a word. You know, it's like, I didn't hear them spell it, I just hear the word. And that's a really cool feeling. Um, so hear the music, not the dits and da's. You gotta find some, something that keeps your interest when you're doing it. Because if you're just listening to uh, recordings over and over, you're doing the same thing, you're gonna get bored, your brain's gonna get bored, you're not really going to learn, you're not going to um, improve, right? You're <laughs> gonna fall off the bandwagon. <clears throat> so you gotta find something that works for you. And funny enough, Get on the air as soon as possible. Um, you can set, when I first started, I had apps on my phone that I would listen to, and I was just thinking, you know, I, I, I gotta get this nailed down. You know, I, I can't embarrass myself on the air by making a mistake. Um, everybody makes mistakes, you know. <laughs> the fast speed, Ron, you make mistakes? Never. Yeah, <laughs> he's lying. <laughs> Everybody makes mistakes. And uh, you, know, you just have to kind of get over that. It, it's like mic fright. You know, you just, you gotta get on the air. There's uh, some, a couple of programs I'll talk about that um, they really simulate really well uh, getting on the air in a contest situation uh, with QSB, uh, you know, QRM, <laughs> people talking on top, uh, everything. But it's still not the same thing as getting on the air. It, it's, it is very different. Um, 
Another thing is when you practice, measure and record your success. Because if you have been practicing for two months and you can't look back and say, wow, I'm, I'm doing, I don't know, 15 words per minute now, but you don't know what you were doing two months ago, you, you, it's hard to gauge how big of an improvement you're making. It's hard to stay excited, right? So record it. Once a week or so, record what you're doing. Start now. I hate to tell you all, but we're not getting any younger. <laughs> Older you get, I swear, it's harder. The, the kids, when I do the Boy Scout Merit Badge, they absolutely love Morse code. They couldn't care less about the radio. They want to play with the key and, and you know, they're not good at it, of course, but that's what they're interested in. And I tell you, they could pick it up just, you know, lickety split. If anybody has any questions, just fire away, by the way. Um, so what I first started doing was, like I said, I had an app and I listened and listened and listened and listened. Didn't really think I was getting anywhere. <clears throat> so I would try for a while. I'd get bored. I'd go a couple months. And it's amazing how quickly you lose this stuff, too. Uh, it's not like riding a bicycle. Uh, so I heard about CW Ops, CW Academy. And CW Academy, it, they put on free classes that you can join. They're all by Zoom. And uh, it, it's live instructors. It's facilitated by on Zoom. They have three sessions per, per year, and there's usually, usually a waiting list because uh, they fill up really quickly. Uh, they do, so each session is eight weeks long, two meetings a week, so it's a total of 16 classes that you, um, depending on your schedule and who they put you with, you could be with someone in the area, you could be with somebody in California. Usually it's still US based, um, and they'll find a time so everybody can get in. <clears throat> CW Ops would like you to start with a paddle from the very beginning instead of a straight key. Um, when you get on, you, you literally practice sending, receiving. Uh, you can ask your, your teacher and other people general questions and what have you. They give you daily homework to, to practice listening and sending palindromes, short stories, QSOs, and they use a uh, website called Morse Code Trainer. They've got, did I mention it's free? Yeah. So it's free, but it, it's hard to get into. Um, they've got different levels. The beginner's course, I did not actually take. Um, on the website, they have some um, recordings that you can listen to. And so you start at the slowest one. It's like, okay, I, can, I understand that one. So you move to the next one, and you get to a point where when you can't understand it anymore, that's the class you go into. <laughs> okay. Really, and that's what they tell you. Um, so the beginner class, it's for people that have limited or no prior experience with Morse code. It's basic uh, characters, letters, numbers. Um, you, they start to introduce the idea to head copy. That's not writing down on paper or using the keyboard, just listening and putting it together in your head. The sooner you can start doing that, the better. Um, they want you to learn the basics of a QSO, just a basic QSO, how to get in and make a contact, not going through some big rag chew. Um, use the skills for on, let's say, use the skills for on-air basic QSOs. So basically telling you how to get on, right? And they aim for six words per minute, but that's Farnsworth at, I don't know, around 15 to 20. So the character speed is fast, but they give you a whole lot of space in between. So you're, you're really, you know, talking very slowly. Um, like I said, I didn't do that one. I jumped right into fundamentals because I'd been practicing. So the fundamentals class is for people that's familiar with Morse code, operating about six words per minute or more, uh, want to increase proficiency, uh, aiming to increase the head copy, the instant character recognition. You don't want to hear da da da. You want to just hear the sound, the musical note, and know it's a C. Um, so they, they really start pushing that. Increase skills for the on-air conversations introduction to contesting. So uh, they, they introduce you to some of the slow, slow contests, like I mentioned the SST, the slow speed contest, um, and learn Morse code up to about 10 words, about 10 words per minute is what they aim for. So after the fundamental, I took the intermediate. Uh, it's for those operating 10 words per minute, 
They want to go faster. They start to concentrate on contests, DX, and rag chews. They start using a couple programs called Morse Runner and Rough ZXP. They really push the head copy skills, and they really start pushing recognizing words instead of letters. So when you hear T-H-E, it's the. You don't hear T-H-E. You just hear the. Um, they really want you on the air. Uh, they want you to play in, in the CWTs. And when I was an intermediate, CWT was still too fast for me. Um, but they really want you to try. The uh, learn Morse code up to about 20 words per minute. So I graduated from the intermediate class. And then I went into the advanced class. Well, the advanced class is those about 20 words per minute, uh, wanting to go faster, increase head copy. Um, yeah, basically they're trying to go faster. They're trying to get you up to about 30 words per minute. Uh, they want you to start recognizing phrases instead of just words um, or letters. And then they also try to get you to start copying behind. So if you, you end up behind, you're still hearing, you're still putting stuff together. And uh, increase overall skills to be considered for a CW Ops membership. To, to join CW Ops, you have to be sponsored. And then, I don't know, I'm not a member, so. <laughs> uh, then, I don't know, you, you join it. Uh, so I took the advanced class. And I got rolled over like a steamroller. <laughs> I was not prepared for that class. So at that point, some people that were in the advanced class with me told me about a intermediate instructor that they had. So I went back, requested that guy, and retook the uh, intermediate course. And so Mark Tyler is the guy that I went back and took. And I'll talk briefly about him in just a minute. But uh, so the CW Ops class. I enjoyed it. it. It made me learn the code, made me get on the air. The other one, and I was hoping Wren was going to be here, because Wren put a lot of time into the Long Island CW Club. Um, it is a club based out of um, Long Island. It has, uh, I forgot how many members, over 3,000 members, I think. I don't see it on there now. But anyway, it's like around 3,000 members, multiple countries. And uh, it is $30 a year to join, or it's $90 a year, uh, I mean $90 for a lifetime. It's worldwide. They have classes seven days a week. Over 75 classes are offered. They have daily forums on all kinds of amateur radio stuff, whether it's you know, POTA, SOTA, the latest gizmo, um, all kinds of forums. They've got specialty programs for youth, YL, uh, students with impairments, whether it's autistic, hearing, visual impaired, they have specialty classes for that. One thing that's really nice about Long Island CW Club is that you can audit a class. Well, with CW Ops, when you sign up for a class, they expect you to be there at all the classes. The C uh, Long Island class, you can just jump in. Uh, when you log into Zoom, you can even put audit by your name, and they won't even call on you. You can just sit there and listen if that's what you want. Um, so you, don't, you can check out a class and see if you're prepared or you know, um, how it fits. Every day they've got two or three Zoom rooms going at one time. And depending on what the classes are, you, you go to a particular Zoom room. They actually prefer you to start with a straight key and then move to a paddle. But they really want you to get on the air as soon as possible. And they do something kind of cool. But as soon as they think that you're your sending is good enough to, to actually reply to someone. If your receiving is OK, they'll get on with you and with Zoom at your station. And so they'll be listening to the same person that you're going to try to make a contact with. And if you happen to freeze up or whatever, the guy on the Zoom will say, OK, their call sign is so-and-so. You know, or now send the RST. Now send your name. You know, so they'll coach you through it. And uh, so that, that takes a little that mic fright away. I haven't taken advantage of that, but I do know they do it. Once you, uh, you sign up, you get a link to a Dropbox with all, it's like years of presentations and videos and all kinds of very cool stuff. I am a member of Long Island CW Club. So told you the CW Ops, they offer the different classes. They're multiple 
sessions, what have you. The Long Island CW Club is different. They have like a beginner's group of classes. You can jump in uh, to the sending class, the intro club to get started. You should probably take that one first. But then they have this, they call it a carousel. It's, it's three classes that are just going round and round. Jump in wherever you f see, if, uh, see fit. They've got the beginners one, beginners two. And then when you think you're good enough, you jump over to the capstone, which is kind of a test, sort of, if you want to call it a test. And then when you're you know, past the capstone, you can jump over and do the same thing for the intermediate. So you don't have to start on day one with this class. You could jump in on day 12 because it's going to circle around and start back over. And uh, so it, if your time is limited for work or whatever and you can't always make that Tuesday, Thursday CW Ops class, you know, this is an option. Long Island CW Club forums. They also have all these additional forums, and this is just a small subset of what they've got. Um, They'll, they'll have Zoom meetings and talk about antennas, 3D printing, uh, you know, license exams. The doctor is in. That's basically the same thing that's in QST type stuff. Boat anchors, old uh, radio receivers, transmitters. Um, Marcerino, that's the other thing I was hoping Ren would bring. It's a little practice device. It's kind of cool. Uh, so just all kinds of radio information that's not just CW. So tonight, if you were to look at the Long Island CW Club schedule, for today, they've got a sending warm-up class, they've got a legacy capstone, sending prep, they've got the doctors in, beginning carousel, radio and related technology uh, forum. That one's recorded, so it's played, I don't know if that means it's recorded or played back. Um, inter intermediate and advanced sending. So they've got all these different classes that are going on now. And really for $30 a year, it's a lot for your money. I don't take advantage of it, I forget about it. But, so which is best? <clears throat> Honestly, it depends. CW Ops uh, Pro is your, your group is really only four to six people you know, when you're in a class. There's scheduled classes on the calendar. I think it's a pro because if it's in my calendar, I'm going to be there. Uh, yeah, it's forced, I found it forced me to be accountable because, you know, in the, the class, you're practicing sending to everybody, you know, and, and receiving. And if you don't practice and you don't, if you're not ready for the class, you haven't done the homework, you're letting the other people down, you're hurting them, you know. So I found that, you know, to, to keep me accountable, keep me on schedule. Um, cons, it fills up very quickly and there's uh, limited seats per class. The homework, the homework they give you, they say you can do it in about an hour. Maybe it's just me, but I couldn't do it all in an hour. Uh, so I found that very hard. Um, as long as you make it to the classes, you pretty much graduate. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're ready for the next class. I also, since I took two uh, of the intermediate classes, I, I kind of have a feeling that depending on what class or what instructor you get, has a lot to do with what you get out of it. Um, to join the CW Ops, you have to be sponsored. Um, and then Zoom, there's always Zoom problems, uh, but there's always Zoom problems over on Long Island CW Club as well. So the pros over there, it's actually a real club. Oh yeah, there we go, over 3,000 members. It's got over 77 different classes. Uh, from the time I started making this, this slide a few days ago, they added three, seven, five, six, seven, two classes, because it was 75, now it's 77. Uh, you're able to audit a class, so that's really nice, but the problem with that is you're not required to be there. You know, and if, if you're like me and if it's in your calendar, you're gonna be there, but otherwise, I don't have to be there. So, you know, it's, it's like a buffet. You take, take as much or as little as you want. Uh, there's always some sort of class available. If, if you have some free time tonight and you want to do some CW, you jump onto a class. There's one going on. Uh, the, the circular carousel method, I think that's actually kind of nice because you can just jump in at any point. You don't have to wait for a class to start. Cons, it's not free. The classes tend to be 10 to 15 people. Uh, I, I put able to audit as a con as well because it doesn't hold you accountable. Uh, so which is best? It, it really depends on you. Um, I did, like I said, CW Ops, and I kind of got started. 
I uh, finished the intermediate class the second time. Still don't think I'm ready for the advanced class, but I joined CW Academy, not, not CW Academy, Long Island CW Club, thinking that you know I could still get a little more information and what have you as I, as I go along. Um, I've not really done as much of that as I probably should have. So Mark's method. So Mark is Mark Tyler K5GQ. I'm, I'm not here to tell everybody how to learn Morse code, not teach you Morse code, but there's a lot of information that Mark Tyler came up with and uh, I've got a ton of it and I got his permission to share it if anyone really wants it. There's a uh, spreadsheet that he's come up with and basically he, he's an intermediate instructor. He's the one that I had for the second time. Uh, he does not follow the CW Ops syllabus. It, he's come up with his own and it, it's it basically, everybody's heard of SMART goals. SMART goal has to be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. And he totally believes in that. So his method is, it, it's, it's specific because it's aimed at your current level of ability, whereas the general classes just kind of throw you in there to figure it all out. Um, he's got a set of tools. I mean, you can download the tools, it's not his. Um, but, and then with his method, his, his order of learning, uh, I found the absolute most improvement going through his class. Um, and basically it progresses from easier to harder, uses Farnsworth, you don't move forward until you've met certain goals. Um, there's a spreadsheet for keeping track over time and you know, if you're in his class, he's got hints and tips for tr different trouble combinations. There are certain letters that you know, give everybody hang ups and what have you. Um, he uses Morse Runner, Rough ZXP, and the Morse Ninja uh, website, and we'll, I'll, I'll touch on those in a minute. <clears throat> but if, if you're really, now for a beginner, I wouldn't say to jump into this, but once you've gotten all the letters and numbers down, this is great, it, it is really a great way to do it. If you ever need a little uh, boost you know, in morale for, for learning Morse code, uh, DitDit.fm is a podcast. There's only 35 of them. Funny enough, the 35th one is Mark Tyler. Um, he's interviewed for it. And it, it's a podcast where they, they interview people that they may be blasting away at 35 words per minute now, but they tell you how they started. And you know, when you're listening to these guys um, tell how they started, you're like, I've got that same problem. You know, or, you, know you, you had Mike Fright or Key Fright or whatever. And it, it, it just makes it much more easier. And when I get through listening to one of the podcasts, I'm like, oh, I want to go play radio. You know? So it, it's dit.dit.fm. You can find it on um, any podcast um, you know, thing that you use for podcasts. <laughs> what? Like I needed another podcast. You, it, this, there's, only, there's only 35 of them. It, it's a good one. It's a good one. Um, so report back to the group and tell what you think about it. Um, so any other questions, comments? Crickets, okay. Um, learn CW online. <clears throat> so this is a, a go-to for, the only parts that I used out of it really is the lessons and the Morse machine. The lessons part is really just, it's conch based, so the order and you, you set the, the time. And so it, it reads out letters, you type them into the box, and then when you're done, you hit compare and it shows you know, how good you did. Uh, you, so you start with one letter. Well, actually it starts with two. It starts with K and M. And then once you hit about 90% accuracy, you add another letter and you keep going. Uh, <clears throat> there's tons of apps and whatever, but this one I, I enjoyed. Uh, Morse machine, it's on the exact same site. It's just a different um, feature. And so you tell it how many characters you want to use, you know, the character speed, and it just reads out a character and you just type it on the, on the keyboard you know, as you hear it. Um, listen to it enough, it gets ingrained. Morse Code Ninja. This is, um, it's a website. I should have wrote the guy's name down. I don't remember his name. Um, he, he has recorded thousands of videos on YouTube, and he's recorded them also into MP4 so you can download them and listen to them. <clears throat> if you go to the learning section, um, 
like I said, it's YouTube videos and, and downloadable uh, mu uh, music, essentially. Uh, it's based on the conch method on his, his, he starts with T, goes to A, and so with every letter, there's a small introduction, single character, single character, uh, two characters, three characters, and then as you go along, he adds. So like if you're down here on practicing on N, it's using E, A, and T as well. Um, it, it sounds so simple, but it's, it's really very effective. Um, I, I have it loaded in, on a CD in the truck, and I can just listen to it. Um, yeah, so introduction, single, single character, blah, blah, blah. He's got them at Farnsworth, so the character speed is 20, but it's Farnsworth down to 10. He's also got 25 at 10 and 30 at 10. If you go to the practice session on the same website, <laughs> you can actually download um, or play anywhere from 15 to 100 words per minute. If you want something fun to listen to and make your mind blow, listen to a couple of the 100 words per minute. Um, I, I, I can't list everything that's on his site, but some of his recordings are like the top 100, 200, 300 uh, words, most common letter combinations. I found that to be very helpful. Uh, states, provinces, CUSO practice, common names. Just, it goes on and on and on uh, of the subset of stuff that you can just practice. And if you hear it enough, you start, to, you start to hear the words, right? So Morse Runner. This is a very cool tool. It's actually one that Mark Tyler uses and CW Ops uses. Um, I mean, it, it's free to anybody if you just download it from DX Atlas. It's a contest simulator and you can set uh, the maximum speed, the number of people that you you're gonna hear at one time, because it's a contest simulator. So you'll call CQ and a bunch of people will come back to you. But, so you set your speed here, and in this case it's set for 30 words per minute. So the people that come back are gonna be at 30 words per minute or slower. Uh, some of them will be a lot slower. But the pitch will vary, the, uh, the noise, the flutter, the, you'll have people stepping on each other, you know, just like a real contest. Uh, or you can set it to just single call mode and it'll do just one call at a time. And one call at a time is really what I would recommend to do um, until, you get, until you get better at, at recognizing the calls. But um, it, this is a really, really great tool. <clears throat> yeah, so Mark uses this and he's got different data files that you can load and uh, so it'll start with like three character calls, four letter character calls, then it will do uh, DX calls and so you can, you can build up um, as, as you practice. I, I will tell you that it's kind of surreal when you're playing Morse Runner and you hear yourself call your, my name, my call sign showed up in the Morse, Ru in Morse Runner file. So I got it, like, wait, I, that's my own call. Yeah, the, the main database that it uses is the super check partial or, or whatever. It, so if you play in contests, your call sign will get into the super check parcel, partial file. And uh, it's used by a bunch of different loggers and whatever to check call signs as you enter them in. So uh, yeah, it, it's very possible that your call sign, I haven't had that happen. It's only happened once, that, but it happened. That's pretty neat. Little, little. Did, yeah, so did you make the contact? I did. I did. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Rough ZXP, it's a, it's a similar program, it, but it, it doesn't simulate a contest. It's just for practicing letters, numbers, call signs. Um, as you get things right, it speeds up. Well, it's an option. You can set it for fixed as well. As you make mistakes, it slows down a little bit. Uh, so, uh, in, an important thing is it, it keeps track of your progress. You can go back and look at the history and see how many you got right, which ones you had problems with, which characters are giving you a hard time. And then, because if, if you're successful at, you know, most of the characters, don't spend your time practicing them. Practice the ones that are giving you a hard time. Uh, so it'll, it'll help you figure that out. Uh, Mark Tyler's method, the very first thing that he has you do is practice the two letter states. 
and he doesn't have you move on to anything else until you can go through the two letter states, all 50 states, twice. Doesn't sound hard. It was harder than I thought initially. Now it's no problem. <clears throat> um, and I asked him why. And he said, because think of all the contests where the state is part of the exchange. And it, it's true, at this point, I don't hear GA or WI, or I just hear the state. You know, and it, it makes the contest, the exchange, that much easier. So he's starting you out learning something that's gonna help with contests. Um, then he's got two letter digraphs, so they're, they're different combinations of letters that either, you know, so like PH makes an F sound. Um, and, and the guy must be a rocket scientist or something, because he's put all this research into the different letter combinations and how the brain works, and um, it's, I found it very effective. V-band, Jay, I think you mentioned V-band a little earlier. So V-band is a odd little website that uh, is hamradio.solutions, and you can go there, you can use, well, they've got different rooms, well, different channels. They've got a private room where you can go and you can use your keyboard and the shift key um, to you know, tap out Morse code, or you can set it for a paddle and you can use each shift key. I'm not telling you to do that because that feels very, very weird. Um, they've got a private room where you can just go practice sending stuff. They've got a QSO bot, which is kind of a, not a very smart AI. So if you call CQ, it'll come back and give you some call signs and you can practice uh, a QSO. Then they have a public room or multiple public rooms where you can go in and I've actually chatted with people from Germany and all over the US. Uh, so that's actually kind of neat. Using the keyboard, like I said, is really dorky. But you, I think they're up to $30 now, but they sell this little adapter that you can plug up to your, uh, your computer. So they sell this little adapter for $30, or when I first found them, they actually showed you how to buy a um, AT Tiny 85 Arduino board, and they're like five for 20 bucks, or something on Amazon. Uh, just solder a jack onto it, and they had the programming, which literally, it just acts like a keyboard and just, you know, mashes keys. So I made this for like, I don't know, less than $5 or something, and it does the exact same thing theirs does, except theirs is prettier than mine. And uh, so if you plug it in, you know, it's just USB, plug it into your computer, and then plug in whatever key, you can use your real key, whether it's straight or paddle, on the website. And then the other thing I found that I actually like is there's an app on the phone, and I can show you that later on when you come around. You can use your keys to practice sending on your phone. So that's kind of nifty. <coughs> um, hey, that might be the last page. Hey, that's the last page. Excuse me. I've been coughing for two weeks. I gotta go all the way through it again. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. To V band? Yeah. It, it's, it's weird to find because it's called V band, but it's hamradio.solutions. Can you make your slides available? Yeah. I didn't think they were that good, but yeah. Good enough. Good enough. A lot of things I don't know. Cool. Come on, there's got to be some questions. Yeah, so I'm on 10 meters a lot, and okay. I hear a down the band, like uh, 28.1 something, above the digital. There's always, it seems to be somebody, mm -hmm. I don't know if they're practicing or if it's a, is that, is there on each band just an open frequency where people are free to get on there? And just well, I mean, there's the whole portion of, of the CW right. portion of every band. Okay, that's true. Um, there are some calling frequencies. That, that people use. I don't know them off the top of my head, gotcha. but so uh, just, it, it could be. Or could it be speaking speaking really, really small. What was I gonna say? Well, uh, you may be stumbling into the beacon band. So one of the very first times. What frequency were you on? Down <coughs> just above digital. Yeah. 28, 1, 22 yeah. is uh, beacon band. 
So, and when the band's up in here, beacons from all over the world. Yeah. So I'm, even higher up too. I'm gonna tell them myself. When I was early on, before I was really getting on the air, but you know, I'm, I'm learning this. I can do this. <clears throat> I was on 10 meters. Actually, it had been six meters now. I think about it. But anyway, I was looking through the CW portion, trying to find somebody, and, and I came across some Morse code, and it was really weak, and I was trying to decipher it. And it's still going a little too fast for me at this time, you know, and I'm, I'm like, what is it? And I'm like, I don't know what it is. I'm gonna go get the real radio, because I was just listening on an SDR at the time. So I went uh, to the other room, got a radio. Actually, it wasn't six meters. It was two meters. That's why I went to get the other radio. And because uh, I only had one radio that would do um, Morse code on two meters. So anyway, went and hooked it all up and everything else. Long story short, yes, I had found a beacon. And so that beacon wasn't going to come back to me, no matter how much I tried calling it, you know. Uh, but Where was this? Uh, it, it was actually over in uh, uh, Canton or something, somewhere over there. How it, long it, ago was this? A uh, couple, two, three years probably. Okay. Yeah. You probably stumbled across one of our beacons. Uh, uh, I don't even remember the call, there's, you know. There's a two meter and a UHF beacon up on Sonny Mountain right now. Okay, yeah, now this, when I looked it up, once I finally figured out what it was, it was over in uh, Canton or something. Can you really yeah. talk about the plateaus that you run across when you run? Yeah. Because uh, there's, there's distinctly three plateaus you hit. So. Well, what are they? Oh. oh. <laughs> when, you, when you're initially learning it, I mean, when you've never really practiced CW before you're initially learning it, you're basically making a transition from a sound to a letter in your head. Yep. So, you know, you're hearing da-da. Yeah. You're hearing that, and your brain says that's an A. Okay. Once you, once you pass five, six words per minute, you can no longer really make that transition all that well. Mm -hmm. So you have to start listening to the sound and instantly putting it down. Mm -hmm. 13 words per minute is, is the famous plateau for that one. And that's the reason that the, that the FCC in the years we had co-tests set it up that way at 5, 13, and 20 words per minute. Hmm. 20 words per minute, you can no longer make that kind of a transition. You, can, right. you have to hear it right. Yep. Just automatically. Once you start approaching 20 words per minute, you're no longer hearing just individual characters. You're beginning to pick out the words. Exactly, so, yeah. And that's the reason it was set at 20 words per minute. Well, and, and that's why CW Ops, uh, Long Island, uh, CW Academy, uh, they really recommend the 20, uh, 20 words per minute character speed and then minute, Farnsworth. They're, they're you know. using the 20 word per minute uh, mm -hmm. character speed. Right. But five, ten yeah. minute spacing. Yeah. That's, that's, that's old. That's, now, that's and what I'm finding, or what I actually had a problem with, was once I got to where I could hear 20, 25, and at times I can even get 30 in short bursts, you know. Uh, but you know, so if I come across somebody and they're going a little too fast for me, if I ask them to slow down, well, what they what they do is they slow down. So they they go to you know I don't know I, I say ten words per minute. They go back to the da da da, and I'm no, that's not what I want. You know, I need high character speed with more space, and and there's not a Q code that says that. You know. <laughs> uh, Unfortunate thing about being on the air is it's not computer generated. Yes. Yeah. It is fist generated or hand generated or whatever generated it may be, but it's not going to be perfect. I, I have called CQ and I've had people come back at a speed that I know I could hear, but whatever they're using or however they're doing, I don't know what the heck they're saying. You I'm know? sorry, I did that too. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I know my sending's not great, but I, I do use a paddle and that helps. But uh, you know, anybody that's just learning the code and. I, I got this information from uh, this is years ago. My K4 JSR basically told me. He said you can't cram for this. You have to know it or not. So at five words when you're trying to learn five words per minute, don't tear yourself out. But do it every day, constant. 10, 15, whatever you can stand. Mm -hmm. to get to the five words per minute where you can pass that test. Once you pass that test, you can start stretching. But he was adamant about that, and I used that, and it actually worked for me. Now, when I was trying to reach 13 words per minute to pass the test down at the FCC office when, when they were doing it, I couldn't get past that, plat that plateau. Right. The 
only thing I did is I got tapes. This back, I don't know, most of you guys may not understand what tapes are, but <laughs> you use cassette tapes. Yeah. I got 20 words per minute cassette tape and just beat on those things constantly. And then I would go back probably in two or three weeks and listen to 13 and it started sounding slower. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's some tricks that you can use for that. Yeah, that's actually a really good, good tip. And, and so yeah. Far above what you can hear, you'll get there. Yeah. So if you start practicing a little faster than you're good at, then you drop back down, and suddenly yeah. and it, it feels slower. Thing about five words per minute. They told you, Cal told us, I said, take your keys, put them in the drawer. Don't get them out until you pass the test. Because mm -hmm. right now, you don't know what sending is because you don't know what the characters are. Mm -hmm. You just you back yourself up, and he's true. You would do that. Yeah. Um, I thought of something I was going to say, and then I forgot what it was. Must not have been important. So, what about hardware? What, do you practice key, or what, what should you start? Where should, where's a good place to start? I think the best place to start is practicing your receiving. You know, because like uh, Rick was saying, um, you, know, you got to be able to hear it. Because if you can't hear it... Got to be able to read it. You, you, read it yeah. yeah. You know, I, I, honestly, telling on myself again, I... Um, I remember more than once I tried sending out, you know, or answering. I, I didn't do a CQ. I, I tried to answer somebody, and uh, they would come back, and I was I was hearing them. I knew their name, I knew their call, and everything else. But it was that Mike Fright or Paddle Fright or whatever. Because as soon as I, you know, put my call out there and they called me back, I couldn't hear crap, you know. And um, then I remember actually going, sorry brain went dead, <laughs> you know, 73. <laughs> and uh, I got an email from them. They understood what I sent, but I had no idea what they had sent. Uh, and, and that was useful. Uh, in my, my early, early on, yeah, I screwed up. I didn't have it all. But some guys would actually send an email and say, hey, keep it up. You did good. You did whatever. So that was, that was nice. But um, if you are interested in getting something to practice with, um, again, it depends. You know, the first key I bought was actually a Navy uh, flame proof. You mind, if I show? So a Navy flame proof like this, because I thought it was cool to do um, CW with a straight key. I wanted to do a straight key. I have since found I am not good with a straight key. Um, and because of CW Ops wanting you to use a paddle, I went to paddles and you know, it's the computer doing the sending. I mean, I'm sending, but it's maintaining the spaces, but my sending's a whole lot better. Um, but, you know, I mean, this is a good time to start talking about, I guess, you know, what people brought and different things like that. And, you know, I know we've got several Morse code guys here that can probably answer, you know, really where to start better than me. So, actually, I should just be quiet. <laughs> well, there's so, a lot go of ahead. I noticed the one. Instruction course you showed they encourage starting off with the paddle. Mm -hmm. and don't even worry with the straight key. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of discussion now about the old school guys think you should start with the straight key so that you can get the rhythm yep. and a proper three to one spacing, blah blah blah. But if you start using Farnsworth at the higher speed, just different spacing, there's real no reason to even go with the straight key to begin with. Because you're learning you're learning Exactly what you're going to pick up by when you when you when you learn something with the paddle, the the, the spacing and everything is automatic by the keyer, yeah. so you don't have to worry about doing it with a straight key. Straight key is a wonderful skill to have, okay? Because if you're in one of these scenarios where you're shipwrecked someplace yeah. and your key is yeah. broken, do one of these yeah, yeah. yeah. jumper cables, and yeah. send code. And get and get the message there, but in reality, the I see the fact that Matt done because of the, like he was mentioning back when I first learned there were no such things as cassette tapes and stuff, and the, the, the high tech back then was AWRL records. That we BC before the the cassette. <laughs> God, we didn't realize how handicapped we were, path we were being sent on. Yeah. Because by today's methods and the way the brain works, the Farnsworth method of, of actually hearing. And in Farnsworth, Farnsworth would be something like this. 
carry. Okay, spacing it out. Radio, okay? But when you put that all together, what you're trying to learn is... <coughs> what is that? It's an R. It's R. R. You hearing it that you're playing time? pirate. R. So, you... you <laughs> You, you, I, I am a firm believer now that the way they're teaching with the Farnsworth and go with the proper hardware. In my estimation, if you're starting from ground zero, don't even bother with the straight key. Start to listen first, like everybody's saying, and pick up the speed. Because then, when you actually sit down with a paddle, it will be more natural for you because the machine is making the character for you. You just know whether you're left or right on the paddle. So, yeah. Well, it's, what, what you're talking about is the iambic method. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, you know, that's, we were just talking the other day, most of the radios have electronic keyers built in them, mm -hmm. where you got dash dot, dash dot, yeah. you know, and it's an insertion, so you can squeeze the key and yeah. make it an R or K, mm -hmm. depending upon which one you do first. And that's all good, but at five words per minute, and when you're that slow and you're just beginning, I kind of like the straight key because you're sitting there and you've got something that you, you're listening, you're trying to actually make that character with your hand. It's simple, and it's a good method to get on. Main thing is, if you want to increase speed, get on the air. Yeah, That's yeah. The yeah. I totally agree with that. anything else, but get yeah. on the air. What did you refer to? What method was that? Iambic. Yeah. Well, well, it's your electronic here is the paddles. Yeah. What I was talking about, that's, that's, the, that's the method that's used. For well, you can use an iambic paddle without iambic, you know, because I mean, it, it, if you hold down one side, it does did 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 did. You hold down the other side, it does da 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 da. But 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 the iambic part is when you start doing squeezes. And you don't have to do the iambic, and and I've played with it, and there's only what a dozen letters maybe that that actually helps with, maybe I don't know, maybe not even that many. Uh, your dots yeah. always come out extremely fast, and your your dots are somewhere. Off the scale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, I still have. I always keep a straight key next to my next to my paddles so that I can slow down. I can slow down faster mm -hmm. jumping over to the straight key, mm -hmm. and then you know, if I'm like in a contest or something, yeah. and somebody comes back to me really slow, I'll just grab I'll, I'll just grab my straight key and I can slow it down faster than I can turn down the knob and turn it back up and match them. Right. I can match them in my mind faster than I can. Try to figure out which knob I got to turn down. Yeah. And so that, or which button on my radio I got to turn down. Um, yeah. So that I've always, I always keep a straight key next to my back. I have both of mine connected, and through the radio, you got to go through a dozen different menus to switch. But uh, I use Ham Radio Deluxe, and so I've got a macro little button on the screen, and I can just hit paddle or straight key, and and I can switch like that. Um, I I can send reliably-ish at about 25 with the paddles. Straight key, I'm, I'm way slower. So bottom know. line, brand new person in Morse code. Mm -hmm. Paddle here, is there a brand? Is there something that anybody would recommend? Getting in, cheap. Um, this is literally one, I mean, it's, it's junk, but I 3D printed it at home on a 3D printer, and it's about five bucks, you know, or, or less, you know, I don't know. That's the, the screws and everything to go into it. Uh, the plastic's about 70 cents or something, you know. Um, but it works, and I've sent code with it. I, I have a little QRP radio that I keep this with, and so it's it's not good, but it works, you know. So, uh, or you can go absolutely crazy, and there is no way on earth I would ever have this thing if I had not gotten it through an SK sale, and uh, the guy's call sign is on it, and so they because the call sign was on it. They let it go insanely cheap. Um, so this is a Begali sculpture. This is like Ferrari, and I mutilate it. But <laughs> you know, I still have one. A Begali sculpture. Yeah, um, and you don't need that. But you know, that, I meant to bring. I have an American Morse paddle. It's about an eighty-dollar paddle. Now, it used, used it when you came out with the Scouts that day. Um, it's not great. It's not bad. It works. Oh, yeah, yeah, you've got one of those. They also made a set of iambic paddles that were fairly inexpensive at the time. But I don't know if you can find them used. You can find them up on eBay or someplace like that. But what was the name? It's called Ham Key. 
And they make they made a um, paddle straight key combination on one base. Yeah, they did. And oh, then yeah. uh, Brown Brothers was very similar, almost identical to hand key. It was it was identical. I think I think hand key came out after Brown Brothers quit manufacturing. And the guys in St. Louis did make yeah. these things. I've got Venture is another, and that's the oh, yeah. I use as a venture paddle. You can buy those new uh, from Vibroflex down up in Tennessee. Things new, they're about, what, 150, 140? Yeah, somewhere so, 150, 100. Yeah, I mean, a MFJ makes one that's a venture make, wannabe. Does MFJ still make a knockoff to that one? Yeah, the venture? they do. I don't know, but they used, it used to be, when I sold those things years ago, it used to be a... Uh, Venture panel with the MFJ unit to sit on top of it. Hmm. And I understood after I retired from, from there, I won't, that, that was, I guess, MFJ came out with their own version. Hmm. So I think hmm. ever but, seen but to answer your question, I mean, it, the paddles, the there's cheap ones, there's expensive ones, and to practice, I'd find a cheap one, you know, uh, and it doesn't really matter. I mean, a straight key, could literally be two wires, right? You know, I mean, right. you look up homemade straight keys, and they make them out of all kinds of things. Uh, yeah, uh, but but paddles, you can get a, a cheap paddle for less than twenty bucks. My Viking Navy key, which is a black base, I think sometimes it's made out of brass. But uh, the the nine Viking actual key itself. Basically, with micro switch contacts. It didn't have an actual brass contact or any other kind of contact like this one does mm. right here. It was actually a micro switch. Yeah. Mm. And what's that Navy key you have there? It's a flame for the, the Navy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why there's no sparks. You get away from that. Yeah, they, I don't, they don't still make them. Yeah, but but that. mine I got at a ham fest. Mm -hmm. I, I think they normally run eighty, hundred dollars, or about. <laughs> some, some. Yeah. yeah, I got lucky because I was at the ham fest. It was at the end of the day. I was walking past the last table. I saw one. I picked it up. I was like, "How much you want for this?" And I don't remember what he said. And I said, "I'll give you twenty bucks." And he's like, "Oh no, no, no!" And his buddy looked at him and said, "If you sell it, you don't have to take it back home." I got it for <laughs> twenty bucks. <laughs> so. Mm. So, for the ones who do the uh, who work the most code, do you generally go for conversation or just contact? That seems to be a, because I'm new to the average world here. When, you, when you're starting off with five words per minute, I mean, have you passed a code test many well, years I ago? Well, I come from another world. Okay. I was a Coast Guard radio man 30 years. Oh, and, uh, you, you know what it is. 13, how many years? I don't know, 13 years, oh, yeah. And we started off a straight key. We were forbidden to use electronic keys. Right. Uh, in fact, and I think the reason was because we don't mostly search and rescue Morse code on a 500. And you needed to go slow mm -hmm. because of the stress involved in, in, in a SAR operation. You have to get it right. You have to get it right the first time. You can't be playing back and forth. So that's where I come from. Uh, I think by graduating, I'm just think I try because people say when I tell them that, well, how fast did you go? Well, I said, I think we started at 20. That was after four months training. So it was not progressive education that you just described. It was what, if you wanted liberty on Friday, you got to pass this test. It was very simple, you know, for a different world. So, uh, it's a different incentive than what hands are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I thought, so I'm just curious, but I noticed in this, in this hand world, which I just re-entered about a year ago, maybe a little more, but anyway, there's people who just make contacts, which to me is like, yep. okay, but, there's one weekend, it's contact. Yeah. It's contact, no well, conversations. Then yeah, through the week, anything else you'll respond about mm -hmm. everything going on. The reason I asked is because if you do conversation in code, you learn a lot better because you're just mm -hmm. talking as if we're talking Oh, right and you now. start to hear words. And, and that's what yeah. we used to do mm -hmm. a lot in the off time. I mean, we weren't always in search you know, of rescue. Of the things they taught you in, in that course was how to abbreviate and abbreviations that mm -hmm. you, you will run across and you will use all the time. There's no different. In CW, you're going to start out at five words per minute. You're going to spell out words like Georgia. Well, a little bit later, you're going to use GA. Mm -hmm. And you're going to use WX for weather. Yeah. TU for thank you. All kinds you know. of you. Know. Oh. TU for thank mm -hmm. you. You'll find all kinds of little, little shortcuts. 
that you don't learn and you'll use. And as you progress getting better, you'll you'll learn those. And the conversations will get faster. But yeah, first your first contact, if I work for a minute with somebody, can be, you know, you're really good to get the call sign, your report, yeah. and hopefully where they are. Yeah. Uh, but, but, you know, a couple of weeks, a couple of months, or a month later, you're, you're into finding out not only where they are, but what the weather is. So, you know, yeah, it's, it's a progressive thing. And I think it depends on what you're interested in. You know, if you're a contester and you just want DX entities and what have you, that's all you need. Yeah. But if you like to talk to people, then, and, and that, that is very different skill sets because when I first got started, all those abbreviations, man, that really threw me for a loop. I'd, I'd be following somebody fairly good and they'd throw out F-E-R. You know, what the heck is F? Well, that's four. You know, but yeah, and, but you know, it's the simple little change, changes that'll throw you. And then by the time you figure it out, they've moved, you know, on down the road, and you're lost. So five and in. It's not. It's not five nine nine. It's five in in. Because in is you know simple. Did I? Mm-hmm. Or in is da 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 dead. Yeah. Um, so, so you know, those are those are the things that you're going to learn when you get on the air, or like the CW ops class, Long Island uh, well, as well. I really like it because it has to flow through. It it, it builds Even you my, up. My experience it was beaten into me to begin with, mm -hmm. but still, after you worked it a while, it flows through. You don't even hear it. And I did course stenography years later. It's the same thing. It just flows through. You don't even hear it. You're just a you're just a, a conduit for it. Mm -hmm. And if you let it flow, it comes a lot easier. I'm a high-speed photo company like Milton Lord. I don't know if any of you guys have ever heard of him or talked to him. You know, Milton, Milton is a really high-speed CW op. He has been. And I, many times I'd be in his basement where he was repairing amateur radio equipment, and I'd be talking to him, and he would say, wait a minute. He goes back to his radio, and he's at about 35 to 40 words per minute. Mm -hmm. and just as little as you think about it, that's faster than I think we're conversing. Oh yeah. And he'll he'll he's he's actually too in conversation once he's hearing the code over here in the corner, he's registering it and reading it and talking it's a skill that I didn't think I had would ever have any hope of getting. Uh, he he can do it. There's some of these guys that can do that. It's amazing. CW is a second language. It is a language. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly think it's to think in CW helps too. Just think that, you know, as if you're thinking in foreign language. So, it's very good. So, uh, well, that's what I fear. I fear getting out. I tell the guy, I tell the folks, I fear get out of that because there are a lot of coasts. I didn't do mammature because the stations I had doing that clubs. But the thing was, I was so afraid of getting out on there and say, have an old master chief come on and say, Gardner, you haven't learned a damn thing, have you? <laughs> So. Every, everybody up here on the air is a master chief, so don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that, that kind of brings me to the, well, I, I'll put it two ways. So one thing that I thought would be a good idea for the club, not just CW, is um, to start trying to implement some, some special interest groups. Because the survey that came back, you know, we had a bunch of people that was interested in POTA and SODA and CW and, you know, all these little niche things that if you're interested in doing parks on the air, you don't have to wait for the club to do a POTA event. You know, if there's someone that's interested, well, okay, not volunteering Ryan, but so Ryan loves soda. And I don't think you do much POTA, right? You, you do summits on the air. I mean, so, I'll do it in combination. Okay. So, you know, if you take somebody that has interest in it and, you know, it, or, okay, I'll, I'll say Rob. He's interested in POTA. I don't know if he is or not. I'm just saying he is. Um, you know, and, and if you're going to go out and do an activation, if you just throw out, you know, an email to the group and maybe there's somebody else that's interested or maybe they'll do a, uh, an activation to a different park at the same time. Y'all can meet up for, you know, breakfast, lunch, what, you know, what have you. And, you know, make these special interest groups where somebody's like, you know, I want to learn how to do that. I've never done it. But you know, maybe I'll, well, I went on a, a summit activation or two with Ryan just to see how to do it, you know? And then I went on a few more uh, just by myself. And uh, so anyway, these special interest groups, if you just announce what you're doing and the people that are interested in it, you know, it, it's, I hate to say a small club, 
but you know it'll help the club overall because it'll get more people in interested and uh, grow the club. Which brings me to CW. Um, you know, I don't think I'm proficient enough at all to teach someone Morse code. Now, I think, you know, I talked with Paul a little earlier about getting started, you know, where to start, uh, the, the initial letters, some tips, and, and where to go, where I think I could probably get you to the point where you'd be better for the fundamental CW Ops class and not the basic, you know. So if somebody wanted to take the CW Ops class, they sign up for the list, but there's not a class for six months, instead of putting it on hold, if there's people interested, we could still get together, we could do Zoom, we could do whatever, and, you know, just, you know, either have class or question, answer, you know, I don't know where it would go, but wondering what kind of interest there is in that, if there's any interest. I got one nodding head. Okay, two. Yeah, okay, so, you know, it, and it doesn't have to be a huge thing. It could be a small group or whatever. Because um, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I mean, CW Ops, Long Island CW Club, uh, NARFL, they, they actually have a, a weekly CW online class thing. Um, and, you know, so I don't want to reinvent the wheel, but, you know, more give support, share information, you know, build up friendships and, you know, laugh when you make a mistake. And you can laugh at me when I make a mistake, you know. Um, so that, that's the idea. And, I mean, we can send out an email or, or whatever to see who's interested in doing it. Because I think there's more people that didn't make it tonight that are interested in it. That works. Sounds good. Um, if anybody doesn't have any more questions or what have you, do you want to just like get up and look and see what everybody brought, or do you want to like take turns and show what you brought, or? We just kind of walk around maybe. That works. But first, thanks very much for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you.